Here we'll talk about the incidence of a subsidy, which I briefly discuss right here. I need to explain how I get that conclusion. So let's start in the middle diagram with consumers. We are going to be ignoring the demand curve, the new demand curve, or the new supply curve that I drew when I was talking about taxes, but otherwise I think it's useful to use the same diagrams. So concentrating on the middle diagram, now consumers get a subsidy, which is a negative tax for consuming this product. The original equilibrium price was here, let's call it P1, but now you have a demand shift in the other direction, let's say this. So the demand shifts up by the amount of the subsidy. You have to be careful not to uh, abbreviate subsidy by S because you can confuse that with the supply curve. Now that's not all good news for the consumer because the new equilibrium price, that is where D prime hits the supply curve, is here. In other words, price has gone up. That's not good for the consumer. So is this really good for the consumer? Well, draw a line. And again, that's supposed to be vertical, but th my diagram is a little bit off. The extent to which price rose isn't helping the consumer. It's hurting the consumer. The consumer is helped only to the extent that that hasn't happened. So this part is of no help to the consumer, even though the consumer gets a subsidy. This part must be helping the firm. Consumers get the rest of it. This is similar to the tax analysis, but you do it on the right-hand side of the original equilibrium point, not on the left-hand side, because when you have a subsidy, quantity goes up. It doesn't go down. When you have a tax, you go to the left. That's what I indicated here. But when you have a subsidy, you go to the right. And so you do it to the right of the equilibrium point, and you can see that the F and C are flipped compared to the tax. Okay, how about if the firm gets the checks from the government? So here, you have a shift to the supply curve, but the supply curve shifts out like this. So the firm is happy because it gets this subsidy from the government, but on the other hand, the equilibrium price, which used to be at P1, is now down here at P2, which is below. So equilibrium price has fallen. So that doesn't make the firm happy. You can draw a line from the new equilibrium point up to the original supply curve. And you can see, so that's the amount of the tax because that's the amount, the vertical amount by which the supply curve has shifted. And this part does not make the firm happy. So this part must be going to consumers because the price is lower. Only this part makes the firm happy. So uh, although it's, it's harder to see from the way I've done it, if you had drawn the left-hand diagram and the middle diagram with the same amount of subsidy, and I didn't do that, I drew the left one with a smaller amount of subsidy, but if you had drawn it with the same amount of subsidy, then the geometry would be the same, and therefore the conclusion is that you don't have to specify whether it's the consumers or the firm that gets the subsidy. Instead, you can simply, in the right-hand diagram, start at the original equilibrium point and move from that to the right until the vertical distance between the supply curve and the demand curve is the amount of the subsidy. Once you've got there, then you can divide that amount of the subsidy into two different parts. The top part is the one that's captured by the firm, and the bottom part is the one that's captured by consumers. So now you can see that the summary I put on the bottom part of the screen is correct, that that is the way to tell which part of a subsidy goes to which party.